Good deal. Hey, everybody. Hey, live universe. We are back on live with Ryan Pearson, who is a genius in the window efficiency uh, division here. And uh, Ryan, tell everybody hi. Hey, how's it going, guys? All right. We want you to wiggle your finger, not like the creepy kid from The Shining, but we want you to wiggle your finger to help spread the message of these technologies that Ryan and his team are putting uh, uh, putting through, actually, right now. And we're going to hear about that in just a moment. His talk is called Solar Control Window Panes. Uh, Ryan, any uh, questions for me before we actually hit the recorder for the podcast over here? No, no, I think I think we're good to go. Uh, I, and it, it should be solar control window paint. Uh, uh, oh, not paint. paint. That, that might have been <laughs> paint. my bad. Or no, uh, no, I, that was that's my bad. Paint. Okay. P P A I N. Paint would make paints would make sense too, though. There yeah. there are quite a few of those on the market as well. Yeah. Well, that's even better. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna find out about these these magical. Uh, window paint treatments here i'm i'm a new homeowner so i i'm like i'm seeing cha-ching cha-ching in my mind when you're, when you're you talking should. about all this stuff and i'm thinking how how can i be part of the test marketing group to to get solar you know whether it's spray paint or what whatever it's going to be to uh save even more money without having to get solar panels which i don't get much sun because i've got lots of trees around so uh <laughs> we'll we'll talk about that in a moment are you ready Absolutely. All right, Ryan, we are live in three, two. We are live with Ryan Pearson. Ryan, are you ready to talk? Absolutely. Ryan Pearson is a Ph.D. candidate in materials chemistry at Colorado State University. Ryan's Ph.D. thesis PhD Ryan's PhD thesis has focused on how to use the sun's energy to drive chemical reactions. Now, Ryan is working with a fellow graduate student to design window coatings to reflect the sun's energy away from buildings and save us all a whole bunch of money. Ryan Pearson, welcome to the talk. Oh, thanks. Thank you for having me here. Now, I added that last piece on the bio, but I am a fairly, still a fairly new first-time homeowner. I am looking forward to this because I want to save money on my energy bill. So and just please take us behind the talk, which is called Solar Control Window Paint. Yeah, absolutely. So a little bit of background. Um, as you mentioned, my PhD thesis is is trying to use the sun to drive chemical reactions. So some of the background in that is, um, reactions that can be driven by light typically don't need other forms of energy. So it kind of has this environmental aspect in mind, the green chemistry per se. Um, and around this time where I'm, I'm kind of developing my career or my graduate career, my uh, advisor got an ARPA-E grant. And ARPA-E stands for Advanced Research Projects Agency in the Energy Division. So they give out money to try and uh, get some um, energy saving projects going that typically would have a high barrier to market or something like that. So this kind of seemed like the perfect thing to think about. I typically think about how sun works and how that energy affects our reactions. Well, now kind of how do we take that energy away that's typically warming up our house? And uh, I mean, it's really important when you think about how do you approach a problem that affects a lot of people or how do you approach the biggest possible problem? And uh, I believe it's 40% of all U.S. energy goes into our buildings. Mm -hmm. And you think about that's a lot of energy that we're spending. And then on top of that, what's the inefficiencies of those buildings? And it's typically windows. About 30% of all the energy in these buildings, the, the losses, goes through your windows. So that seems like a great target that we could focus on to have this environmentally friendly project in mind. Well, you have this great uh, slide at one point where it just has a graph of the infra infrared and the radiation and all of that, and the visual spectrum is just a tiny little piece of that, and the rest of it is all this harmful stuff, uh, like the, the, the kind that can tr uh, change you from a scientist into the Incredible Hulk, for example, or, uh, yeah. I mean, I look outside and I have a, uh, a a writing gazebo actually in my backyard, which is part of the reason why why I'm living here at this home, but uh, it needs a new roof because it's 
it's the, the sun has just shredded these cedar tiles on the on the roof and the and the shady side it's almost like new so yeah. it, i mean we see things like that the you know an old car having paint wearing down you know it's it's because of the sun and all of these rays so great um great slide for sure what what are your thoughts about all that i thought you visually represented that very well yeah i think actually one of my first slides and i i don't know if i i pointed it out in my talk but um, recently, when we moved away from my childhood home, we uh, we took out one of the carpets in the living room, and there's this space that's the, under the carpet that's nice. The wood looks beautiful, and everything around it is completely worn out from either it's a little warps from the UV uh, and just the the sun beating down on it. So that example with your gazebo uh, definitely uh, you know rings a bell. Um, yeah and, yeah, and I mean, we all have couches that have faded because we left them sitting in the sun without a cover or some kind of protector Absolutely. right there. I mean, the sun is doing some amazing work for us, but I, I love how you're you're basically going to be restricting the rays of the sun and filtering it out even more efficiently. I'm assuming that you would have some kind of application and, and, and let, let me know uh, how, how it works. Like if in the winter time, I would want more heat coming in through the window, but in the summertime, I would want less heat. So is it uh, seasonal like that, or are there treatments that could yes. be installed at different times of the year, or how would it work? Yeah, so that's actually, I'm, I'm really happy you asked that, because that, that's some of the questions I got after the TED Talk, and that we usually get at these trade shows, is you know exactly what you said. I'm just going to reiterate it. In the winter, you want that heat to come through, and in the summer, you don't want any heat to come through. So that kind of changes the approach of, of how you answer a question of these window inefficiencies. Mm -hmm. So our product, or what we're making right now, is a film that you would apply on the inside of your window, and it would only re be reflecting the heat away, basically. We're reflecting the ultraviolet light, we're reflecting the infrared light, stuff that you're not able to see, so that since we're only reflecting those, you still have your beautiful backyard view. You can see your gazebo and whatnot. Um, you're selling since, this already. I'm, uh, <laughs> this is, I'm, I'm seeing the picture. <laughs> but but since we're, we're reflecting heat, unfortunately, this wouldn't really be good in places like Canada, mm. where you're either in the summer and you're comfortable, you don't need to reflect that heat, you're, you keep all your doors open, but in the winter, you want that heat. So we're really thinking about targeting that person that's in Texas, that's okay. in Arizona, South Car uh, California, Florida, where they're either comfortable in the winter, relatively. My grandparents who live in Florida still wear sweaters in the winter, which is crazy. Uh, but then you, in the summer, you're trying to reflect that heat out as mm -hmm. much as possible. So this is only going to be reflecting heat specific targeting those summer months. Makes sense. So you're gonna you're gonna niche out the market instead of trying to you know, reinvent the wheel, literally, or Absolutely. reinvent the window with all kinds of extra applications that would add all kinds of inefficiency in terms of the cost and in terms of, you know, the scaling not really happening. You're going to target regions of the country or of, of the, the world Absolutely. just to, to uh, block out the sun. And there's probably going to be some competitor that <laughs> shows up and figures out how to do the reverse or to do both of them at some point in the future. Yeah, so like w I guess when you're looking at windows for your house, if you're in a region like Colorado where mm -hmm. it's hot in the summer and it's cold in the winter, you're thinking about insulation. Mm -hmm. um, you're thinking about that double, triple pane, pane argon filled stuff. Um, however, we're trying to fix the market that has that single pane. Mm -hmm. And to replace your windows, maybe you know as a, a new homeowner or maybe not, to replace your windows, you're thinking upwards of $10,000 for these replacements. Mm -hmm. Most people do not want that kind of investment. Yeah. So we're thinking about these people that have single pane windows that want to be able to invest and get their money back in a year. For sure. So, uh, you know, any thoughts? I, you know, you're you're not you're not in the same niche as uh, Elon Musk, but you're. It, it seems like you know we're 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 moving towards, you know, n not necessarily renewable energy, but using in in this case, you're filtering out the harmful rays, the un 
helpful raise. And you really are helping us save money and save energy by only letting certain spectrums in. So, I mean, what, what's your take on what's happening right now with solar and with uh, electric cars and with just a, a real thrust towards some of these renewable technologies that we, it, it seemed like, uh, you know, my age uh, as a, you know, Xer, it seemed like my first half of my life, or really up until about 15 years ago, it was almost like science fiction stuff. Now we've got all of this stuff. We're wearing it. We've got it on our houses. It's starting to pay off. What's your view on it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm not really an expert in this area, so I don't want to talk too much on it. But I mean, it's really fascinating to see how people approach these problems, right? Um, before this project, I didn't really know anything about how inefficient windows are. I, maybe it's because I'm not a homeowner right now and I've only rented, so I don't think about where my money's getting wasted and whatnot. But for these renewable technologies that you're talking about, it, I mean, it's just mind-blowing to read these articles about how people are approaching something that maybe no one's really thought about. And and kind of on, on uh, I guess, your question maybe more in my expertise is that I think I read an article about someone being able to put transparent solar panels on a window. So not only are they blocking heat, but they're absorbing it and then using it for energy. Grand, they're not ef that efficient yet, but it's just it's amazing that there's something like that out there and that people are actually doing this. We've been enjoying this conversation with Ryan Pearson, and uh, we are uh, getting ready to talk about you, Talk Universe, because we know you have that idea that can change the world. So we'll be back right in a moment. With Ryan, with Ryan Pearson for the Blitz Round. And we're back. It's time for the Blitz Round, and we have Ryan Pearson with us. Ryan, are you ready to rock? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So first question, were you selected to speak, or did you apply? Uh, this is something I applied for to try and get the word out more, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, are you a memorizer, an improviser, or a blender? So for this TED Talk in uh, more business-oriented talks where I'm trying to bring it to the, the not the common person, the lay audience, uh, memorizer, I, I really want to make sure I, I choose my words carefully. When I'm giving scientific talks to my peers, mm -hmm. it's usually off the cuff, um, just trying to go with the flow of things. Yeah, well, and, and it's because you've got... Um you know, terminology that you're used to that the rest of us uh, ignorant folk don't understand. So <laughs> you've got you've to choose those things uh, very carefully. Um, what was your thought about how, to, how, how you bridge the divide there? You, you had some jargon in there, but then you explained it. How did that serve you? Because there are so many other people that, that give technical uh, talks like this. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I kind of enjoyed it. I, I mean, it sounds cliche, but I, I like to talk to my grandma about what I'm doing, mm -hmm. so I kind of know my base level. I mean, people say make sure your, your grandparents or your parents could understand that, and none of them have a scientific background for the most part. So I, I figure out, you know, my analogies that I can use, the the, the phrases that work, and I was very fortunate to have uh, enough people that listened to my talk to say, what what are you talking about? Like, you got to take this slide out. And, and there was a good team at CSU that also did that as well that, that gave uh, great feedback. And I, I can't stress that enough, just giving the talk to many people and seeing what the problem was. All right, Talk Universe, don't be afraid to bring some truth tellers as part of your review team who will do exactly what they did for Ryan here to say, hey, that didn't make sense. You're speaking over my head, what, whatever it is, because that will make the big difference for your talk. You walk out on stage, Ryan. Did you have nerves? Were you in the zone or neither or both? Oh, I, I still get nervous uh, for almost every talk I give. Um, I'm really hoping that's going to go away at some point. But, uh, no, I, I remember I was uh, in the back. I was doing some exercising, to say the least, to try and just get all amped up. And uh, as I was going up on stage, I gave a couple fist bumps trying, trying to get the mood going. So, yeah, I, I definitely get the nerves going. But I think once I, I hit the stage and I said my first two sentences, I felt like I got in the zone right away. What's a uh, tip, tech or, uh, tip tool or technique that helped you? Depending on the the talk, I don't. I I, I try and practice in the car, in the shower a lot because there's are, are times you're not doing anything. So again, I mean, it's it's something obvious that all your guests probably say is just practice as much as you can, and uh, you'll get better at it. 
All right. We've been enjoying the Blitz Round with Ryan Pearson. And I want to let you know where you can actually go and watch his talk. It is entitled... It is entitled Solar Control Window Paint, and you can go to our website at bethetalk.com. We'll have a link right there, and we'll also have another link to Ryan's LinkedIn profile. If you are a venture capitalist, if you are looking for good talent, if you are looking for for good uh, uh, scientific experts that are on the cusp of new technologies, you're probably going to want to connect and link in with Ryan, and we'll be right back with the final word of advice with Ryan Pearson. And we're back with the final word of advice with Ryan Pearson. What is it? Oh, that's a good one. Um, probably my, my, my biggest takeaway is, uh, I guess when I started grad school, I wanted to get, get better at talking. And uh, I really was bad at it. A lot of people in my cohort would even say, you seem too nervous. You don't know really how to flow with things. And um, I guess talking or presenting is probably one of those things that you just have to keep doing. And you're not going to be comfortable for quite some time. But um, I've been getting more and more compliments that at least is improving. So I think that is my takeaway is that you just got to keep doing things that make you uncomfortable sometimes to get better. Ryan, it was a great talk and Talk Universe. I'm so glad Ryan said what he said because this is not about the kind of talk that is about you or about how good you are as a speaker. This is about promoting ideas and spreading those amazing ideas. Ryan, great job, and thank you again for coming on the talk today. Thanks, Nathan. It was my pleasure. All right, that's a wrap. All right, Live Universe, again, share. (laughs) <laughs> get on Ryan's waiting list for the, for these uh, solar uh, or these these window panels and um, I'll, you know get behind me on the on the wa- waiting list I should say any final word to uh, those watching the replay or the live broadcast here no I, I don't I don't have anything creative in mind right now thank you. <laughs> we, we've uh, we've warned you out on that all right good deal hey everybody share and we will see you on the next one. Take care.